Hey friends, it's Christy here, back with you on the My Favorite Things YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the new Sprinkled with Love stamp set. And I have stamped out my images on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium Light cardstock with Extreme Black Hybrid Ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with my little bear, and I'm going to color him in some brown tones. I chose E42, E43, and E44. So the E44 is going to be my darkest shade, so I'm laying in some shadows on the sides of his face and along the side of his arm, and then I'm going to begin to blend that out with the E43. I'm going to keep my darkest colors mostly to the edge. I really want his face to be nice and light and bright, especially because his features are so small. I want that area to be super highlighted so that they really stand out. So I'm going to come in next with my E42 and continue blending that out. And I decided that I needed a fourth shade for the center of his face, so I'm going to use E41 for that. Off screen, I'm going to do a second layer just to increase that saturation and really get that nicely blended. And then I'm going to move on to my bunnies. I'm going to do them in some similar tones so that they all match, but I'm going to change it up a bit. I've taken away the E44 and added in the E40. So I'm using the E43 now as my darkest on this little guy down at the bottom and then blending out with the E42. For him, I'm going to keep that face area very light just like on the bear and then also his little belly. I wanted there to be a nice highlight there. So once I blend it out with the E42, I'm going to use the E41 to finish most of him off and then I'll come in with that E40 to just add that little bit of highlight. I decided to keep the area around his nose white just for a little extra contrast. And then for the last little guy, I wanted him to be just a shade lighter. So I took away the E43 and I'm going to use just the E40, E41, and E42 on him. I'm going to leave a little bit of a larger white area on his muzzle, just so each of them have their own personalities there. Then I'll bring in R11 and R20 to do the insides of their ears and their noses. I use the R20 on all of their noses and also on the inside of the bear's ears and then use both shades on the inside of the bunny's ears. And then I'm also going to give them some rosy cheeks with these shades. I'm doing a little oval shape with the R20 first and then I'll take the R11 and trace around the edges of that so it blends in with the rest of their fur color. And I'm moving on to the clouds and I decided to go with some much bolder colors than I've ever tried before, but I wanted my sky to look really dark and brooding and like these clouds were full of rain that's just about to fall. So I picked B quadruple zero, B41, and B45. And I'm starting with that B45 and just following the top edge of the curves. I'll also add some shadow around the bear and his watering can. And then I'm blending that out with the B41. And just like I did with the bear, I'm sticking very close to the edge with those darker colors so that I have a lot of room for highlight. So then I'm coming in with that B quadruple zero and really blending out the edge of that B41, really pulling that color into the white area and getting it nice and soft and helping that fade into the white. And then I will also grab my colorless blender and go over the edge of that B quadruple zero to just help that fade even more. Then I'll do the same for the cloud with the little bunnies. I'm just going to follow those scalloped edges and also add some shading underneath their little bodies. 
And um, I also wanted to mention that I chose these particular Copic combos because I was trying to match as closely as I could to the distress inks that I'm going to be using on my background. So how I did that was I just held my ink pads close to my Copic color chart and tried to pick colors that were going to be as similar as possible so it would all really match well together. So I'm going to finish this last little bunny on his cloud and then I'll do the other uh, clouds off screen just to save some time because it's all basically the same. Um, just really working over the edge of that B45 so it's nice and blended into that B41. And then again with that B quadruple zero, just using that little circular scribbling motion to break up the edge of that pigment and get it nice and soft. And then coming in with the colorless blender. So now I'm going to move on to the watering can and I wanted a nice bright pop of color on this otherwise just blue and neutral card and I thought the watering can would be the perfect opportunity so I picked some bright reds. I picked R24, R29, and R39. So I'm just adding some shading to the sides and also to the underside of the spout and then coming across the center with that highlight shade. And then I'll add more detail to that later on, but for now I'm gonna grab a black jelly roll pen and go over the eyes of my bear and the bunny that have them open. And then I'll trim these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I've die cut a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock with one of the A2 Stitch Rectangle Stacks set to. This is definitely my most used die set from MFT. It is so versatile. So I'm going to begin to blend on some Distress Oxide ink and the first color that I'm using is Tumbled Glass. And I'm just adding that here and there all around the edges and then also coming across in the center. Um, I originally was going to leave a little bit of white space, so I left that on my first pass, but I eventually do cover up the whole center with that tumbled glass. But for now I'm going to move on to my next shade, which is Stormy Sky, which is very fitting for our scene here. And I'm going to bring that in from just the outside edges and just darken up those corners, creating that nice vignette around the edges so that your eye is really drawn towards the nice bright center. And another reason that I chose to keep my center nice and light is so that when I add my little raindrops coming out of my watering can at the end, they'll really be able to show up against that lighter center. So now I'm using the chipped sapphire. This one's going to be my darkest shade and adding that to the outside edges, making those even darker and really accenting that stitching detail that is left behind from those A2 stitch rectangle stacks dies. Then I'm going to go back toward the center, working my way in with the stormy sky and then finally the tumbled glass in the middle, just making sure that I have a nice fade. So I'll just work back and forth until I have nice layers of ink built up and that I have that really super soft, smooth blend. So it really does look like a cloudy, stormy sky. So there's a look at that. I'm gonna let that dry and once it has completely, I will pop it in my Misty so I can stamp my sentiment and my little raindrops. I'm going to coat the background with a little bit of a powder tool first because I am going to emboss those images. I'm going to ink them up with some Versamark ink, which is just a clear sticky ink that works great for embossing because it really grabs a hold of that embossing powder and holds it in place while you heat set it. I stamp down twice, making sure not to press down too hard so that I don't get any squishy letters. And then I'm going to coat that really well with some liquid platinum embossing powder. And then I'll tap off any excess from the back, bring my heat tool to that. I always like to heat it up from the back first to try to eliminate any warping and then bring it towards the front. And you can see how that 
embossing powder just melts and looks so bright and shiny when you tip it into the light. Then I'll pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using a piece of craft cardstock and I'm going to stamp one of the little bears that's holding an umbrella and he's got a little bunny kind of resting on top of him as well. And then I use two of the clouds again and the sentiment that says, I hope you're showered with all good things. And so now I am ready to choose some pattern paper. I'm going to use a piece from this new Stripe Splash 6x6 and I'm going to do the navy and white stripe. So I'll trim that down with the largest of the A2 stitch rectangle stacks set to. Pop that out of the die. And I just love all of that stitching detail on the edges. I think it makes your card look so nice and polished. And also it just trims off the slightest bit of the edge so that you have your cardstock showing through, which I love because that craft cardstock is going to tie in so nicely with the colors that I chose for the bear. So I glued that down and then I'm popping up my focal panel with some foam tape. So it has a bit of lift, just gives it a tiny bit of dimension on the card. And now I'm ready to begin adhering my images. I'm gonna start with the bear so that I can make sure that his little watering can is lined up perfectly with that sprinkle that I have embossed. So he's gonna go right in the center of the card. And then the little bunny that is facing toward the right, I'm gonna put that down on the left-hand side and have his cloud kind of hang off the edge just the tiniest bit, just so it makes the scene look more expansive. And then I'll add the other little bunny up in the top right corner. And then I'll use the rest of these clouds to fill in the space around these adorable critters. So I'm gonna add one of the larger separate clouds in the top left, and then between that and the bunny at the top, I'll add a tiny one. I'll add another larger one over on the right hand side and below that another small one. And then I've got one more small one and that one is going to go over at the bottom right above the sentiment. So it's just a nice and full scene. So now I'm ready to add some finishing touches to the card. First I'm gonna take a white gel pen and add some polka dots to the watering can as if it were maybe like a child's watering can. I just thought that might make it look extra cute. And also just tie in with the white stripes in the background on that pattern paper. And then I'm going to take some crystal stickles and I'm going to add that to my clouds. I'm gonna go and trace over the darkest edge on those scallops. I always like to put my stickles where the darkest color is so it can really pop against it. So I like to squeeze out just a little bit at a time and then use that nozzle to drag that glitter glue around so that it only goes where I want it. I don't want to cover up all of the coloring that I've done. I worked really hard on it and I want it to show. I just want that sparkle to give you that extra bit of oomph and you know that little bit of wow factor when you tip it into the light and you see all of that sparkle and shine. And if I get anywhere I don't want it to go, it's just really easy to wipe up with your finger and kind of move around. It's really easy to um, push where you want it while it's nice and wet like this. So I'll lift that up to the camera so you can see what I was talking about, how that glitter just really catches the eye. And there is another peek at the inside. I hope you guys have enjoyed the April edition of Christy Gets Crafty with My Favorite Things. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I love chatting with you guys. Subscribe to My Favorite Things for more inspiring videos just like these here on screen. Bye-bye.